Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I just read The Last Volari by Gary Kloster, and while it was a bit cliche, it was overall pretty good. The story follows Nissa Volari, a hot-headed, or should I say hot-blooded, vampire who is hunted by the voice of her dead vampire mother. You might know her from the previously published short stories by Gary Kloster as well. Things get even weirder, however, as the king of the local Kessli enclave suddenly dies, something which vampires normally are notoriously bad at. While Nyssa fears that the magical ailment will also come for her, a large army of Sigmarites shows up on her doorstep, with every intent of purging the land from vampiric taint. Will Nyssa find a cure, before she suffers the same illness as her father? And will the vampires manage to fend off the angry zealots? You'll have to read the book yourself to find that out. The best part about this book has to be the world building, as we get to learn a lot about the Kessli dynasty and the various ways their beliefs can be interpreted. See, this local Kessli kingdom has been separated from their teleporting tower, you know, the one they stole from Castlevania. Being stuck here, they have separated into little fiefdoms, all more or less united under the banner of King Korsovo, Nissa's father. We get to see Nissa travel to and interact with the inhabitants of each of these fiefdoms, during which we learn a lot about the way each of them runs their kingdom, from beast-like monsters inhabiting some forsaken ruins in the woods, to impressive gothic castles that would make every god girl in a 10 mile radius scream their pants. There's a lot of variety and some nice details that make each of them stand out. Definitely a recommendation if you're looking to start your own Castle spin spinoff. However, this also brings me to a downside, which is the lack of weird Age of Sigmar stuff in the book. Don't get me wrong, I like the world building, and it serves the story well, but it is also very uninspired. The Castellai already ripped off the teleporting castle from Castlevania, but this book rips off the rest of the cast as well. The four vampire lords are basically Godbrand, Carmilla, Hector and Lenore, but with different cloaks. In a way, it is weird to see that the Age of Sigmar vampire counts are way less varied and creative than their Warhammer fantasy counterparts, because usually it's the other way around. Regardless, Nyssa herself is actually a big highlight of the book, because of her character arc. Nyssa starts off as an idiot with anger issues who can't even keep herself in check, let alone rule a kingdom of vampires. Throughout the book, however, she learns a lot from her mistakes, and together with the guidance from her, well, deceased mother, she grows to become a lot more competent. Besides, the bickering with the voices in her head were really funny. Sadly, the same cannot be said for the antagonist of the book. About 25% of this book is written from the perspective of a typical general Lady McCommon, I can't remember what she's actually called, to be honest, because she and her arc have nothing interesting in them whatsoever. Her companion from the Sigmar Church is just an incompetent zealot, who reminds me a bit too much of the word bearers from Battle for the Abyss. Can't say that I cared about either of them at all, but thankfully the majority of the book is from Nissa's perspective. The final big highlight of the book is the plot. Because there is some fighting, sure, but that is definitely not the big focus of the novel. Instead, it is much more about the politics and figuring out the mystery of the magical curse that has befallen Nissa's father. As the reader, too, you are constantly thinking about who it could be and why. It kept me engaged, and while in the end the plot wasn't the biggest surprise, it did toss some nice curveballs along the way to keep you guessing. And as you probably know by now, I'm always a big fan of books that focus on exploration, dialogue and characters instead of just tossing some named characters at each other for 200 pages. So all in all, The Last Valari gets 4 to 5 Vargols. Sure, the human arc is an interesting and the vampire parts are awfully cliche, but at the end of the night this is still a book with an engaging plot and very entertaining characters. Not to mention that there were some fun world building aspects outside of the Castlevania stuff that were actually really cool, such as Shadas and his magic, or the weird ass cannibal fungi people. Definitely a recommendation for those who want to get a better feeling of what the Castellai are like, and a decent option in terms of Age of Sigmar books for other readers as well. Anyways, that's all I got for you today. If you like the content, please consider subscribing or joining us on Patreon. Otherwise, have a nice evening, and don't forget your nightly prayers to Nagash.